Let me sing you a song of the brickyard Of an empty speedway track Where the ghosts of past five hundreds For thirty-nine years back Wait from June to April Wait until the day When new men come to join their ranks And roar down the straightaway When drivers and mechanics Stake their lives and skill Against the clock and the hand of death In a battle that's going still To join the ranks of Maury Rose Of Bukovich and Mays Of Wilbur Shaw and Jack McGrath New men will spend their days And number one in 55 Who took the big one then That iron man named Swigert is back to try again back to try again Swigert fires up the bellow of his engine roars through gasoline alley as the fastest racing cars in the world stand ready to answer his challenge the first indie winner since Wilbur Shaw to carry number one as national champion is ready for practice he rolls from the garage as the man to beat in this, the greatest of racing classics. The Memorial Day 500 is only four weeks away as Swikert faces the newly resurfaced two and a half mile challenge to men and machines. Then it's time at last for a practice run. Your pulse beats a little quicker. Oh, the track is tougher than you thought it was. The turns are a little slicker. So you try to learn how to feel the track, how to ease around the corner. You've a prayer on your lips that your car is right, for if something gives you a corner, just cars made of rubber, aluminum, and steel, and men made of iron are sitting at the wheel, sitting at the wheel. Then you step her up to a faster pace and your engine starts to thunder. Then you cut a lap in a minute five and the next one a little under. Oh, the winds are howl and the walls are blur and the engine throbs with power. And you're all alone in another world at 140 an hour. The car's made of rubber, aluminum and steel. Men made of iron are sitting at the wheel, sitting at the wheel. Yes, you're all alone in another world with the throttle pulled wide open as you try to cut those... Qualifications. The first of two weekends. 125,000 people to see it. Russo is ready in the Novi as the crowd comes to its feet. On his warm-up laps, he takes the green flag. But after two laps at 142, he's called in by his car owner who wants a record. Ten years ago, the Novi set its first record here, 133 miles an hour. But times have changed. Pat Flaherty, who finished 10th last year, waits as his crew brings his car from the garage. He's on his run. and sets a new record of 146 miles an hour on the first lap. Through his four-lap run at an average speed of 145 and a half miles an hour, a spectacular performance. Jack McGrath's official qualification records for one and four laps are shattered. Car owner John Zink beams at the new record holder. They can really travel on this track, and Flaherty has set the pace. Johnny Tolan on his way. Qualifiers are pushing harder than ever before. He takes the flag and the wheels begin to spin. He's out of the car uninjured.
Late in the afternoon, the no-buy tries again. Russo doesn't top Clarity's record, but an average of 143 and a half puts him in the field for race day. Rookie Jack Turner hurries through a corner. It's the slow way around. When the weekend ends, 29 cars have qualified. Race morning, intermittent showers. The race is postponed. Will the tension, the razor-sharp readiness, carry for another day? The faithful fans pour in, and suddenly, an hour before the race, the skies clear, and the Purdue University marching band scatters the gloom. The bricks are drying. They're going to run. The famed pagoda looks down once more at a stirring sight. Coming to the starting line are the fastest racing cars ever to compete at Indianapolis. The old qualifying records are buried by 31 cars that topped 140 miles an hour. This may be one of the bitterest contests in Speedway history. The fastest car in the field is only seven miles an hour quicker than the slowest. Rumors are for speeds near 140 miles an hour. 33 drivers have waited long. Crawford. For this the final hour. Thompson. With their nerves stretched taut and ready now. Hanks. To unleash all the power. Agabation. Of roaring motors all in tune. Brian. By skilled mechanics ready. Rutman. And now the pace lap coming up. Swikert. And you gotta take it steady. Flaherty. The balloons rise quickly in the clearing skies. Then Speedway President Tony Hullman speaks the historic words. Gentlemen, start your engines. mechanics push you off their biggest job is done and they tell you take it easy but hurry home as back to the pits they run here they come the race is on they hit the green flag together but Rathman roars out of the middle to take the lead clarity duels o'connor for second Rathman is moving away. Rathman completes the first lap at 139 and a half miles an hour, seven miles an hour faster than last year. Bettenhausen moves into third behind O'Connor. Clarity, who started on the pole, drops to fourth. Bettenhausen challenges O'Connor for second place. Going up the back stretch, O'Connor in number seven takes the lead, and Bettenhausen, staying right behind, slips into second place. The lap speed moves to 142 miles an hour, with three cars maneuvering through the turn inches apart. 